With your latest news, I'm April Cummings. More than 4,400 people have been vaccinated for COVID-19, and the public health department says the vaccine will now be available to all people in stage one groups A, B, and C. Radio Command's Felicia Rankin-Sullins explains. The United Kingdom is sending an additional 9,750 doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID vaccine on the January 28th British Airways flight and a third delivery in February. Chief Medical Officer Dr. John Lee. The vaccines arriving later this month will be used for the second dose for people who have received their first dose. We are monitoring continuously the quantities available and will open up the various stages according to our supply. Government is expanding the first stage of the vaccination program to include all three subgroups. Individuals aged 60 and over and persons with conditions such as heart, lung and kidney disease or a weakened immune system are now eligible for vaccination. Our nurses determine eligibility for those receiving the vaccines and some persons have been turned away and asked that they return during the appropriate stage. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Samuel Williams Rodriguez says they have found the five-dose vials received often provide for six doses, which helps increase the number of vaccines they are able to administer. Public Health will continue to provide the vaccination to any person on island who falls under Stage 1, Group A, B and C. For Radio Cayman News, I'm Felicia Rankin-Solins. Public Health has been providing vaccines to vulnerable home care patients. Patients who are receiving home care from a private physician should contact public health to arrange a vaccine to be administered in their homes. Chief Medical Officer Dr. John Lee, meantime, reports 414 COVID-19 tests carried out since Thursday. Six of those were positive for COVID-19. The individuals are asymptomatic travelers, and they tested positive as part of the routine screening program. They will remain in isolation until considered recovered. However, health officials note that those six travelers also provided negative test results as part of the new arrival requirements for travel. The number of people in isolation, whether at a government facility or in their homes as required by the Medical Officer of Health, is now at 1,434. The UK suspends its travel corridor, a decision that will affect people heading from Cayman to the UK. Radio Cayman's John Anglin has more. The decision is effective from Monday, January 18th until at least the 15th of February. A statement from the governor's office explains a country or territory that had a travel corridor with the UK meant that passengers could enter the UK without having to self-isolate on arrival. Cayman was one of 64 countries or territories on the UK's travel corridor list, but now the UK is suspending that practice, which will affect anyone on the British Airways flights from Grand Cayman to London in the works for January 29th and February. February 12th. From 4 o'clock on Monday, January 18th, all arrivals into the UK will be required to complete a passenger locator form, be in possession of a negative COVID-19 test pre-departure to the UK, and isolate for 10 days on arrival. The statement says the UK is operating a test to release scheme where the 10-day isolation period may be reduced if a private COVID-19 test is paid for by the passenger. Reporting for Radio Cayman News. I'm Dion Anglin. You can find more details by visiting gov.uk under the guidance section. Cayman's tourism minister is named one of the 30 most influential people in travel by travelpulse.com. Radio Cayman's Paula Cal has more. There's no question that 2020 was a challenging year for the travel industry. Anything even remotely connected to travel and tourism has taken a hit. But as Travel Pulse writes, tough times tend to bring out natural-born mentors who step to the forefront and along with those that have helped with their guidance and leadership. That's why the online publication put together a list of the 30 most influential people in travel in 2020. Tourism Minister and Deputy Premier, the Honorable Moses Kirkconnell, made the list with the following write-up. Mr. Kirkconnell and the Cayman government was among the Caribbean's earliest identifiers of the impact of COVID-19, banning cruise ships from docking and restricting travel to the islands. He has also been quick to embrace it. In October, he helped push through a remote work program for visitors for up to two years, allowing tourists to avoid normal visa requirements to live and work in the territory. Mr. Kirkconnell is joined on the list by people like the U.S.'s premier immunologist, Dr. Anthony Fauci the chairman, CEO of Royal Caribbean Group, Richard Fain, the Stewart family of Sandals Resort, and U.S. President Donald Trump. For Radio Cayman News, I'm Paula Cal.
As the country gears up to celebrate National Heroes Day 2021, Culture Minister the Honorable Dwayne Seymour takes a moment to reflect on the significant contributions made by our seafarers. Radio Cayman's Shanda Gallego reports. I'd like to congratulate all the nominees who are being honored as part of the new order of the Cayman Islands. What an accomplishment. Your good works will go down in history. Congratulations to you all. During his National Heroes Day 2021 message, Culture Minister Honorable Duane Seymour says the health and safety of seafarers and their families were considered as plans for the event progressed. Next weekend's events in Grand Cayman and Cayman Brac are all about celebrating our culture and honoring the heroism of those who worked in one or more of the many aspects of seafaring in the various nomination categories. Early pioneer, pioneer, excelled at sea, women in seafaring, the memorial scroll, and friends of seafarers. It is impossible to individually recognize each and every seafarer at any single event and those individuals and organizations that will be honored at National Heroes Day will be a sampling of the great seafarers who helped build and grow these islands. Collectively, we should celebrate those achievements, Minister Seymour adds, and the year-long celebration will give residents the chance to attend each district for special events and activities honoring our seafarers. For a long period of our history, seafaring provided Caymanians with a way to make a living and in so doing also helped us to advance and grow our small country. By venturing to other lands, whether throughout the Caribbean, South and Central America, the U.S. or to countries on the other side of the globe. Many seafarers expanded their own horizons, starting off careers as ordinary seamen and by the time they retired, they were master mariners, captain of large ships, engineers and in many ways, chief cook. Whatever roles our seafarers chose, they were renowned for their abilities and work ethic. Seafaring is not a life for the faint-hearted. For all that the sea provides, a life at sea also poses many dangers. Yet despite these dangers, our seafarers kept their sights on the opportunities that life at sea provided for them and for their families at home. The culture minister says it is the courage, sacrifice and hard work of seafarers that have helped build our country and the lives we enjoy today. Our heritage is written by seafarers, Minister Seymour says, and though we aim to celebrate them throughout this year, he says we ought to celebrate them every day. Minister Seymour says he is pleased to recognize and honor our seafarers those still with us and those that have gone before. Shanda Gallego, Radio Cayman News. An appeal for help from the St. Andres, Providence and Catalina community in the Cayman Islands. They need your help with construction supplies and tarps for the rebuilding effort on the island of Old Providence, also known as Providencia. You may recall Hurricane Iota severely damaged the area and even though months have passed, we're told there's still a great deal to be done. Right now, most of the homes are still actually the way, they, the way they were, you know, after the hurricane. Not a, lot, not a lot has been done. The reason for that is Colombia has never experienced a disaster of this nature in its history. So they're just, they're, they're, they're kind of trying to figure things out as they, as they go. And it's taken them a little bit, a little bit longer than we would have hoped for um, to start getting things off the ground. Albert O'Brien Jr. is a member of a group trying to get more supplies to the area. He says because they are not a registered nonprofit, they can't accept cash, but the donation of building supplies will be of great help. No homes have been reconstructed yet. Um, a lot of roofs are still still off. Um, there were some tarps that were sent down, but of course the tarps couldn't cover all the homes. Um, it, it could only cover a few. And right now, Providence, the island that has, has been severely damaged, it's kind of like they're rain the season. There's a lot of people, you know, that are sleeping um, practically in the rain. Mr. Bryan says they've managed to secure a Nicaraguan cargo vessel to take the donations and others from Grand Cayman directly to Providence and then on to San Andres. The deadline for donation drop-offs is Tuesday, the 19th of January. You can find out more by calling Alberto Bryan Jr. at 326-1546 or Dione Britton at 939-6879. That is your latest local news from Radio Cayman's newsroom. I'm April Cummings.